Good morning and welcome to worship at Hollyton United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Dave. Later this morning, you will find today's message on our website, hcfumc.weebly.com. One of these days, I'll get that right. You can also find this and other messages on the Hollyton Charge YouTube page. All music used in today's service is in the public domain. Now, I know that many of you are anxious to return to in-person worship. So am I. However, the governor of New York has established a plan of four phases to reopen New York State. Churches are in phase four. Our Bishop Mark Webb has also strongly encouraged all Upper New York Conference churches to abide by this process. We will keep you posted as we draw nearer to an anticipated date of reopening at Hollyton and Conklin Forks United Methodist Churches. Tomorrow is Memorial Day. You already know that our community event has been postponed until Veterans Day. However, we do want to remember all those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice for America in war. We also want to lift up the gold star families that often go forgotten during this holiday. We have several new concerns to pray about. Rex with COVID-19, Sherry with untreatable illness, Michelle with cancer, Dave recovering after a heart attack, uh, I'm sorry, heart failure, Kathy recovering from a heart attack, foster families and foster children. And there are, of course, so many others in our congregation and beyond who still need our ongoing prayers. Let's remember all of them and let us pray. Lord, we praise you for you are great and greatly to be praised. We humbly worship you today. We thank you for your love and faithfulness toward us. We are grateful for the many ways you are caring for us in this time. We thank you for those men and women who served in the armed forces that gave their lives for our country. Without their sacrifice, our nation might look very different. We pray today for the Gold Star families, those families that suffered the loss of sons and daughters, husbands and wives, brothers and sisters to war. Bless them today as they remember their lost ones. Encourage them, and may they know that you are near to the brokenhearted. We praise you for hearing and answering our prayers for Rex, Sherry, Michelle, Dave, Kathy, foster families and foster children, and others who so need you today. Bring healing into their lives. Lord, wrap your arms around them and bless them. Lord, there are many in our extended church family that need you. We cry out to you for help. We know that you are aware of each one's needs, and we trust them into your love and care. We offer ourselves to you as well today. You know our needs and struggles. You help us in all our circumstances, and we are thankful. May we be content knowing that you are the one who supplies all our needs. Continue to minister your protection and your grace to each one of us. Give us a greater sense of calling that we may creatively reach out to those around us. And may we all know the miracle of your presence in this hour. And may your peace fill our hearts and minds by Christ Jesus. Now in faith, we lift up our voices wherever we are, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we live into our partnership with God in ministry and discipleship, let us uh, respond to God's love with a generous spirit. While we are still not meeting together, our financial obligations continue. In order that we may be faithful to those obligations, I invite all of you to continue your faithfulness in giving. If you have for some reason stopped giving during this pandemic, we need you too. Please, please help with your generous gifts. Please send your gifts to the church rather than to a personal address. And you can find the church addresses on the homepage of our website and send your gifts to either one. Hollyton Church people, I continue to invite you to consider clicking the donate button on our giving page. It's an easy way for you to give to the support of the work of ministry. Let us look to God in prayer. Oh God, once again, we offer our gifts to you. We are grateful that we are able to give even a small amount. We give thanks for your good gifts to us. We are grateful for your provision for us each and every day. And may the gifts that we offer be blessed by your hand that they may serve your purposes in our community. Now, as we prepare to hear from you, and alive in our spirits by your Holy Spirit. May we know the great blessing of your grace in this hour. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I don't know how many of you happen to have a United Methodist hymnal or some other hymnal at home, but if you do, I invite you to turn to, in the United Methodist hymnal, number 528, and we'll be singing... Uh, the first four verses of Nearer My God to Thee. Nearer my 
Anxiety has come upon us. We are experiencing an impatience for getting back to normal. We don't even know what normal will be, but we anticipate the restoration of our worship together. We are troubled by the fact that it's not happening fast enough. It seems that someone somewhere is dragging their feet. We need connection. We need fellowship. We need to be together. We're becoming preoccupied with what we think ought to be. Well, I, I really understand this. But this return, this reopening of the state is causing us to lose sight of what God is trying to say to us, where we are right now in our apartness from one another. It's causing us to misunderstand the opportunities we have to draw closer to God in some very incredible ways. The disciples were facing a difficult time, filled with words and events they struggled to understand. It caused them to have similar emotions in the face of uncertainty. Listen to this passage from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Hear the word of the Lord, and may God add blessing to the hearing. Jesus said, Don't be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. My Father's house has room to spare. If that weren't the case, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When I go to prepare a place for you, I will return and take you to be with me, so that where I am, you will be too. You know the way to the place I'm going. Thomas asked, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you have really known me, you will also know the Father. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. That will be enough for us. Jesus replied, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been with you all this time, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I have spoken to you, I don't speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me does his works. Trust me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on account of the works themselves. I assure you that whoever believes in me will do the works that I do. They will do even greater works than these because I am going to the Father. 
I will do whatever you ask for in my name, so that the Father can be glorified in the Son. When you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In this message, Jesus is telling the disciples what's going to happen when he dies. This being history now for us ought to be something that we understand better than they did. But we get caught up in our circumstances, our anxieties, our ideas of what should be. The disciples were troubled about Jesus' talk of departure through death. Now, the word troubled really is distressed. When Jesus was in the garden, as he faced the power of death and evil, he was distressed. It is much stronger, more profound than just troubled. In his distress, he sweat drops of blood. But evil and death did not have their way in Jesus' death. Jesus is encouraging the disciples not to be distressed if it looks as though evil and death have prevailed. It is not the case. In Jesus' death and resurrection, the enemy not only fails to have victory, but loses all power over us who believe in Jesus Christ. You see, surrender to troubled, or worse yet, distressed hearts will only lead to denial of the power of the resurrection and missing the reality of the defeat of death and evil. Jesus calls on his disciples to trust. He calls on us now to trust. Many translations use the word believe. You believe in God, believe also in me. But here in this common English Bible, they use the word trust because trust implies belief put into action. So also, Jesus' statement, trust in God, trust also in me, are imperatives. Imperatives? Yes, they are commands. Jesus is commanding the disciples to actively turn their attention away from what they think might be going on, and he is commanding them to put their full expectation, indeed their very lives, in the hands of God, in Jesus' own hands. And the promise follows. My father's house has room to spare. I will return and take you to be with me. We will live with God and God will live with us. That's relationship. We share in Jesus' relationship with God. And that's pretty amazing. That's the kingdom of God. Jesus then tells them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, he's not talking about some roadway to a destination. He's saying something that more directly impacts on everyday life for us. To know the way is to know Jesus himself. Jesus was, in effect, saying, I am the lifestyle you are to live. His statement that he is the life further amplifies this. His way is life, and that's the truth. Jesus is simultaneously the access to and the embodiment of life with God, according to the New Interpreter's Bible Commentary. Truth and life are words he uses to clarify the way. In this, Jesus makes the truth of God available to the world 
through his own life. His very life exposes God to us. Jesus then uses absolute language language to let us know that access to God is through him alone. Jesus is, in fact, the enfleshed presence of God. Finally, we turn to an additional teaching, yet still the result of trusting God in Jesus Christ. It speaks of how when we trust, when we put faith into action, when we rest ourselves in God's hands, we are empowered to do more of the works of Christ, which are indeed the works of God. The purpose of which is always to make known the power and character of God. Again, according to the New Interpreter's Bible Commentary. Indeed, as we work, God is to be revealed to the world through us. Our works in Christ are greater works because they also reveal the completed story of Jesus, who is God incarnate. When our lives are really his, Jesus acts in and through us in the works that we do. And what we do springs forth from the love we have for Jesus and for God. These works bring great glory to God. When we live in this place, not working for God, but fully submitted and trusting God will work through us. Jesus assures us then that what we ask for in his name, he will do for us, that God may be further glorified. So I encourage you, don't be distressed about how long it's taking to rejoin together in worship. Trust in God. Trust also in Jesus, who is God in the flesh. Jesus presents to us a lifestyle we are to copy. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Your purpose is to demonstrate that reality through a deep relationship with him. Let God work through you that you may do the work of Christ in this world and at this time. Then when you ask Jesus to do something, you can know that he'll do it because you know God's heart and bring God glory. Let us pray. Lord, your word to us today comes from really a familiar text often used at funerals. We're not in the midst of a funeral today. Yet I know that through this Scripture, you have revealed to us truths we probably didn't know before or think about. In these words of Jesus, you have given us assurance of your love and presence. You have given us guidance and direction for the times in which we live. And you have greater works than we have known, works that bring glory to you. You challenge us to a deeper understanding of your will and purposes. You offer ourselves, we offer ourselves to you. For we know that in you we can know and participate in that purpose. Today we are blessed. We know that your Holy Spirit rests upon us. May our lives now demonstrate that you are indeed Lord. Amen. In the hymnals number 462 is, Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Join me, at least in those places, those verses that you, or the chorus that you know so well. Tis 
so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take Him at His word, just to rest upon His promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust His balancing blood, just in simple faith. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, all for grace to trust Him more. Yes, it is sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self. Just from Jesus and be great, joy and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I pray to more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. So glad I learned to trust the precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me, you will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him. Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Remember today the fallen. Remember their families and bless them. Go now in peace, and may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen.